Good day. It's great to just share with you. I want in a few minutes to reveal to you a secret. I believe is a biblical godly secret. How to increase your finance. How to increase your finance, your income. And uh, the Bible is full of financial principles. Actually, the topic on the Bible that is very well discussed is finance, money, even more than prayer and love and anything else. So we better follow the handbook of what God is saying about finance and what's his plan, because his plan is to increase you. His plan is to prosper you. His plan is to give you more than enough so that you have foot on the table and even more to give away. So my, my topic this morning, I've got some notes here. Uh, how to increase your financial income the Bible way so God wants you to prosper God wants you to have more than enough and uh, so I've got six quick points I want you to try to remember and to just receive uh, my first point is that you have to first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness that is a biblical principle that comes out of Matthew uh, 6 33 first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things will be added unto you and uh, there's a beautiful scripture going with that that I uh, just reading uh, you do not lay up for yourself treasures in heaven uh, or oh, sorry treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal for whatever your treasure is or wherever your treasure is there your heart will also be so the principle here is be heaven focused be spiritual focused uh, you want to increase your finance don't be money focused be kingdom focused be god focused be aware of god's spirit dimension that is operating in everything your money is very much in the hands of god he's the source he's your provider he's the multiplier he's the increaser you have to focus on him so the first thing we say here is seek the kingdom of god first second thing uh, i want you to know is uh, wealth comes from hard work uh, God never bless lazy people. And uh, just a few scriptures going with that. Uh, whoever works his land will have plenty of bread. But he who follows uh, worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. Uh, all hard work brings a profit. But mere talk leads only to poverty. I know a lot of people that can talk a lot and do very few. Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. Very powerful. Um, I mean, there's so many scriptures in the Bible. Um, Solomon said, go to the, the ants and watch them work. Um, you know, learn from, from those who work persistently, consistently. Uh, hard work will position you so that God can bless you. Lazy people cannot expect God to bless. And many people want to have a quick rich scheme in their lives nothing come wealth doesn't come overnight wealth is a process of operating in obedience to god and you work your way up in wealth you build your wealth you trust god to build wealth in your life that you have an inheritance for your children and your children's children so that is the bible's focus on it so number three ask for wisdom this is so important. Ask for wisdom and power to create wealth. And the scripture that's going with it, Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability or the power or the wisdom to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant. So God wants you to produce wealth. Uh, but you have to remember, you get your wisdom, your power from God. Actually, that gives you the, the ability to create wealth. So wealth must be created. It comes from hard work, through wisdom, through dreams, 
for understanding things that God is showing you, new ideas, new developments, new patterns. God wants to create through you wealth. So be open for that. God gives you the ability, the power, the wisdom, and you ask for him, Lord, give me, please give me worth, wisdom, give me the power to create wealth. And then he's end with that to to establish his covenant in the new testament we will say to establish his kingdom so never lose your kingdom focus all right let's go to number four of the six principles i'm sharing to you uh, today number four live connected to and with healthy relationships to god's leaders and anointed counselors and spiritual fathers you need godly counsel and protection and blessing and the scripture I'm using with that is Psalm 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Harmony is unity. It is like fine oil on a head running down the beard, running down Aaron's beard. He was the priest over the collar of the rope. It is like the dew of Hermon falling on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has bestowed the blessing of forevermore. <laughs> You know, the oil flows down and this was the high priest. And the, Im the image here is uh, anointing flows from your leaders, from the anointed ones. And as you surrender, as you connect, as you are, are come into a covenant relationship with godly given uh, uh, leaders in your life, the oil would flow down on you. That's wisdom. And don't be a fool not to do that. That is part of what we are called for. So I just want to go to the next page here with me. Number five. I think it one of the most important ones today. And I challenge you. Give. Give and it shall be given to you. That's what Luke 6 says there. Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. Will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use. It will be measured to you. And then another scripture just there. Now he who supplies seed to the sower, that's you are the sower, God gives you seed, and bread for food, that's what you need to eat, will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. That is the promise of God. And uh, then another one scripture there is, honor the Lord, there at the bottom, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then, then, your barns will be full to overflow and your vats will brim over with new wine. Now, this is Old Testament scriptures. Man, they are so powerful in the New Testament that God says, honor, honor, honor God with your first fruits. Uh, everything that you are earning, everything that you are producing, everything that you are multiplying, your first response is kingdom, is God, is the spirit world, that you honor God, you say thank you. And, and the principle from the Old Testament and, uh, and the New Testament actually increases is to give a first tithe. You give your first tithe to honor, to give to God. And uh, the teaching on first fruits is a little bit different, and I'm not going into that. But you have to honor God with what you have. And God wants to help you in terms of that. All right, now we go to number six uh, of the six principles of multiplying your seed, of multiplying your income. Believe and declare for a great increase. You have to believe it. You have to declare it with your mouth. See, that's where faith works. Faith comes from my heart and it's been declared with my mouth. The word comes from my mouth. So we declare it. And uh, let's read just that scripture. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's you and me. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. You see, a lot of scriptures that Jesus shared with us, lots of stories. He actually talks about our fruitfulness, the multiplication of talents, multiplication of what God has given. You see, God's not, not so much, you know, cared about that you just store up and hold. Actually, the one who store up and hold and did not multiply, God took it away. God expect multiplication, expect increase. He, he expect you to work hard and multiply what you have. That's godly, that's kingdom. And God gives you the power to do that. And I want to close just with this last scripture. Uh, comes out of 1 Thessalonians. And this is Paul that's speaking to us. And I read it for you. Make it your aim to live a quiet life, 
to mind your own business and to earn your own living, just as we told you before. In this way, you will win the respect of those who are not believers and you will not have to depend on anyone for what you need. Man, that is powerful. You have to develop your own business. This is what the scripture actually says. Don't be dependent on other people. There's nothing so low and so destructive in your life when you have to beg, you have to ask, you are dependent on others. God wants you to be creative, multiplication, expansion, increase. He wants you to use your godly talents, your wisdom, the power He gives you to create wealth. So I bless you with that today. As I am, um, um, we're using this as part of the offering that you are giving to God today, this week, this month. You know, be faithful in what you give. Be faithful in what you do. In the Old Testament, there was three kinds of giving. It was offering and tithe and first fruit. In the New Testament, Jesus brings it together as he says, Give and it shall be given unto you and it will run over. Man, God wants you to run over. Jesus came to give you life and life abundantly. Believe it. Confess it. Love it. Be faithful in Jesus' name. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you to do what God has called you and be obedient in every little thing God has called you for. Love you a lot and enjoy this month.